no impact upon you personally, then you should just acquiesce. That constitutes the feminist movement selling out the very women who it needs to support the most, the most vulnerable women, both in their societies and in other countries. That's what Fergus tells you in extension. Adam does not give you a sufficient response, and that's why we win this debate. Four things in closing out the case for the government. First of all, very explicit engagement with what we just heard from Adam. Then three areas of clash. First of all, on interventions of whether or not they harm women. Secondly, on feminists in the West. And finally, on feminists in the countries which are invaded. So firstly then, Adam tells you that there is low engagement with feminists, if feminism is a fringe group. Nonsensical, okay? Feminism is very in vogue at the moment. Lots of prominent figures are coming out and saying they are feminists. We simply don't think that is true. But next though, he says that the feminist movement is so small so as to not be able to meaningfully alter the conduct of, a conf of, of an intervention and the way in which that is perceived. Explicitly in tension with his opening, who tell you that, we, that what the reason we shouldn't do this policy is so that feminists can change these sorts of conflicts. That's the tension which Matt will need to resolve in his speech. But moreover, he tells you that if it is the case that it doesn't harm you, then you should just acquiesce to this war for reasons of credibility. We are the feminist movement in this debate, and we say it is morally unconscionable for us to seek to serve our own ends in that way at the expense of other women. Secondly, in terms of, no, they, these guys tell you that these groups will be perceived, these interventions will be perceived as Western, irregardless of what we do. First of all, that is in glaring tension with their opening. But moreover, we say we can resolve that difficulty when the feminist movement can be very vocal and say, no, you are misappropriating feminist arguments and ideology. It is not the case that this is a feminist war. You are in a stronger position to do that from the outside than when you simply acquiesce. No. Finally, in terms of the feminist movement losing support and credibility by seeming out of touch, it is simply not the case that opposing military intervention portrays you as a loony liberal, okay? Lots of people have patriotic reasons to oppose interventions. The Stop the War Coalition is incredibly prominent. The Iraq War marches show there is often an enormous amount of public sentiment against these sorts of interventions. We don't think that it would be irrecoverable for feminists to criticise these interventions. We actually say it would strengthen them. No thank you. So, moving on to my areas of clash. These guys tell you, that Ella attempts to say, that we need to show to you that all interventions are necessarily and intrinsically harmful. That is not our burden in this debate, but we contend two things. No. Firstly, as our opening outline, as Fergus elaborates on, these interventions and the sorts of structures they set up always, almost always do harm women and do harm their abilities. But secondly, what we say, is even in those interventions which could be efficacious, saying it is explicitly a feminist intervention and feminism is the justification, as Marlene explicitly tells you that she wants to do, mitigates and, 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 and doesn't allow you to achieve the benefits which would accrue from having that sort of intervention playing out positively. As Fergus tells you, when you have resistance to wars, and when you have resistance to interventions, the way in which you garner support is by criticising the purposes and the aims of that intervention and the justifications for it. When you explicitly say that this is an intervention which is seeking to improve the, the rights of women for feminist reasons, for ideologically Western reasons, you empower those groups in society to cut back against all of those benefits and say, no, we shouldn't uh, uh, improve women's political and educational right, rights, because that is Western. That is the tool of the army which intervened and wreaked havoc in this country. It is not the case that these wars go off overnight, no thank you, and you are able to implement the policies. It is the case, though, that they frequently are unpopular in the nation which you are intervening in, or are unpopular with a significant and influential minority, so as to be able to stall the very sorts of progress that these guys seek to achieve on their side of the house. Secondly, in terms of intervention, I'll take my actually, I'll take my. Great, Matt. Okay, so at the point that the feminist movement says that the military can never create a feminist intervention, how do you not also dissuade the same kind of people who would be embedded with an organisation to push for women's rights in new constitutions? Okay, so, firstly, it is not the case that feminists are unable to criticise the worst excesses of these interventions and to say that and they support certain aspects of the political development which may happen after that intervention. What we say on our side of the house is by siding with the intervention in the third place, you tar the subsequent changes with the brush of that intervention, meaning they are going to be unpopular and you are less likely to achieve them. When you now say that giving women a constitutional, giving constitutional rights to women is not a good thing in and of itself, but is a continuation of the war which we havoc in your country, you are less likely to see those sorts of changes. You are less likely to see the very sorts of changes which they seek to, they wish to get on their side of the house. No. Moreover, Marlene tells you that what we are looking for is a feminist armed forces. The feminists should enter into the armed forces. 
What Fergus tells you and goes unresponded to by Adam is that in the overwhelming majority of cases, these armed forces are so entrenched in their patriarchal structures and have cultural and historical attachments to the, some of the most pernicious narratives which persist about the innate differences between men and women. We say, given that, it is insufficient for feminists, if they are as few as you allege, there is insufficient ability for those feminists to enter into the armed forces and create meaningful change. Instead, what we say feminists entering into the armed forces and supporting interventions in the way in which you want them to, it suggests that they are acquiescing, it suggests that they are fine with these sorts of structures and practices and are fine to stand in an organisation which oppresses women in some of the most horrendous ways possible. We say you don't get the sort of change on your side of the house. We say it's better for women to remain outside and criticise and be able to criticise in that way. So, next then, in terms of talking about feminists in the West. Um, as we, have, as we pointed out, it is not usually the case that these justifications and feminist justifications are the ones which are being made by feminists. It is people, it is right-wing conservative figures who are seeking to give a veil to their own ends. We say that feminists need to criticise them on that rather than acquiescing to them. No thank you. Moreover, we say that you alienate minority groups in your, in your own country, okay? Fergus tells you this and goes entirely unresponded to, okay? If you have people in your own country who are um, Muslim, Muslim women in your own country who are seen to be alienated from the feminist movement already, when you now say that siding with that feminist movement means siding with the group who intervened and invades in your country, you are not going to sign up to that movement, you are not going to subscribe to those beliefs, because saying that you now believe in equality means that you acquiesce to the war which wreaks such havoc in your country. These guys say that it's harmful because you don't get gender as a sufficient crack category of, of critique. Nonsense. We say that gender issues and feminism is so important as to be a justification in and of itself for not carrying through with this intervention. We empower feminists and feminist rhetoric rather than disempower it. Finally then, in terms of feminists in the countries which are invaded. You sack support on the ground in the countries that you are intervening in for feminist reasons. Because now to subscribe to those reasons and to subscribe to those beliefs mean that you automatically have to support the war because the war is now so inextricably linked to gender and to feminism for all of the reasons the government tell you. Moreover, we say that you are dictating to people who may not necessarily subscribe to your beliefs of what freedom and what gender equality looks like. As the feminist movement, we think that is unconscionable. Ladies and gentlemen, military interventions almost always harm women. But even when they don't, you remove the ability of them to improve the lives of women by tarring them with a feminist Western brush. I'm exceptionally proud to propose.